blog entry for the 27th of um, August of the year 2013 Robin Kazmarczyk at the controls the zombie apocalypse has not yet begun means the final judgment is not here that means uh, oh king jesus he's still missing from action Although the Antichrists seem to be doing their job quite well. We live in peculiar times. We are peculiar people. The um, Casual and the great awakening are the same. The great awakening is here now in this place. Some witchy person comes to you and says, Away. And you wonder, are you awake? How awake are you? What do you really see? That's a very interesting time to be alive, that's for sure. And uh, somehow. Living is not really the point of this, nor is it dying. It's something beyond death. We search for something beyond death in religion. All religions search for the answer post-mortem, including shamanism. Day trippers. The folks that go out there exploring consciousness do so at their own risk. There are no guarantees in those places where we go. They will come back. You know. Always touching the boundary between the living and the dead has an effect on you after a while. Sometimes you wonder whether you're alive, alive or dead, and where's the difference? So, here's Shafi, Tibetan Book of the Dead, and the Egyptian Book of the Dead, and they say, well, I'm alive, I'm alive. And you don't question it too much more. But there are no guarantees. There are no guarantees in these places where you venture into. 
And whether you're living or dead, whether you're a zombie or a human being, it doesn't really matter if you act in love and can lo loving kindness. Om Manapadme Om. Om Manapadme Om. That's the uh, the Buddhist prayer. Spoke about times like these, just people. And then the times that he spoke were, were universal, timeless times. In every age, there's always the same. There is no end to that. And yet, they speak of the time of the final judgment, the time of the end. Uh, I suspect it's always, I suspect that time is always. Right now it's being the end for somebody. The final judgment is happening to somebody right now, somewhere in the world. It happens, I think, what is it, what is the, uh, what is the uh, the uh, statistic? There's a person born every two or three seconds. Is that it? The person dies every four or five seconds. So there's more people being born than dying. Is that how it works? Somebody, somebody, um, please. Uh, confirm or deny it. I certainly imagine if there's so many people, so many of us out there being born and dying all the time, well, there's final judgments all day long, all night long, somewhere in the world. And we can't evade them. You know, they come with a heart attack, they come with a stroke, banana peel on the sidewalk, a bomb, somewhere. I have so much fun bathing in hot water, because I'm full of soapy, scraggly, But things are not as easy as uh, they could be. My money has not arrived. Held up by UPS in Mexico, all things. Wow. Not working because I don't have an office. Well, I do have clients that come and see me, but very few. Certainly not enough to raise a family of three kids. And um, I haven't gotten up the strength or the force to go out to the Tianguis and sell whatever there is to sell in this house. Videos, electrical supplies, whatever we got. I kind of need to do that to have some cash in my pocket. But then. They dissed me. They dissed me. They didn't want me to read cards out there. Which really annoys me. I don't like to be annoyed by the people and their needs. I am. Um, time ago I told this town 
collectively that um, the goblins, the spirits, wood spirits, would be very angry if they built a city in this spot. Because this is a spot sacred to the woods, to the wood spirits. And uh, that if they built a city, the city would burn. Well, they're building a city. first, right? That should be the first order of business in jail, but guards are too hip to that, so they make sure you get killed by your own friends, the ones wearing your uniform. <laughs> so I've had the orange coal, I've had the orange colored uniform in South Carolina. I kind of know what it feels like in that army. Oh, Anon. Los Angeles and New York and anywhere else. Munich. All those places have been behind matters. Briefly, always briefly, but nonetheless, with ease on, usually behind my back. And, um, What else is there to say this morning? Went to bed about an hour ago. Woke up because the girlie was ready to go to school and she wanted some information on stuff from me and she wanted to call the taxi cab driver and certain little things. I don't mind. That's what I'm here for. What I'm doing. Where am I? There's a lot of freaky shit. Everybody 
his life. I'm no different from any of you. Freaky shit going on here with me is not different from the freaky shit going on with you. segue to the uh, truth shall set you free because what it shall set you free from is sin the real chain karma beyond karma about doing either good or evil acts preferably not acting at all Isn't that funny you just wake up and you're tired you ever had that feeling it's wicked A narcissist, sociopathic personality. And you try to keep it in check. You try to keep it reasonable. And the way to do that is using the strength of your relationships with the people you really care for. My mother said wisely that I don't have any friends. She's right. I don't have any friends except my family. And family is not ordinary friends. They're family. They're folks you hold together. I do have friends, a few of them, uh, but it's not like a culture friend. I, I don't go out of my way to cultivate friendship. And the friends I have have chosen to be my friends. They've come to me. I've never gone out to search for friends. So that's what you call a sociopathic personality, a narcissist sociopathic personality. That's the that's the uh, definition of that. I don't feel guilty about it. I don't feel wrong about it. But it is a particular psychological tra trait. which is commonly found in tyrants and sociopaths and folks you don't want to find in a dark corner of some city. Slower. And oddly enough, maybe I don't feel that. I don't feel I don't have empathy. Indeed, I feel my ne my level of empathy is much too greater than most folks. 
because I expand my empathy to cockroaches and rats and flies up to where I can up to up to the point where it's practical you know I did film the great cockroach genocide of the octopus and the poodle well I've had about three or four of those genocides in my life so all my sputtering about cockroach compassion is not entirely true is it and yet I speak in favor of a ceasefire between cockroaches and men because men feed cockroaches with their garbage instead of feeding spiders with cockroaches, they're cockroaches. So they raise animals for slaughter that they don't really use. Seems like a wasteful bit of uh, animal husbandry. But they don't really have control over cockroaches. That's the, the element of surprise. as they don't really have control over rats and mice in their cities either. If they did, there would be no rats and mice in their cities. So as adversaries of men, cockroaches, rats and mice, are more than qualified to take on that role. And I am very fond of these animals. I find them funny and insightful and sweet at times, even though they are the adversary of my species. So what if a gigantic space hamster comes to take over the world? Would I be in favor or against it? Probably in favor because somehow rats and mice and other vermin are overall far more compassionate and intelligent than our own selves in their choice of um, survival strategies. They're not hunters, you see. They don't go out there to kill things. They don't have to. They live on scraps. <clears throat> Parasites, you know, parasites are an interesting species. All parasites. Fleas and a cat. Yesterday I had a conversation with my niece about the fleas on the cat and what it be, would be like if you were a flea on a cat. Basically, you would live in a huge house made out of food. A warm, living house that took you places for free and all you would have to do is hang on so you don't fall off it and you would eat your house drink its blood well this is really kind of what we do anyways on planet earth as human beings we have this beautiful gentle organism called the earth which we chop up and drill and blast with dynamite, dig caves into mines for our benefit, not necessarily for our needs. The earth supplies our needs more than sufficiently. But we like to blast her and drill her oil and drink, drill her diamonds and drink her water and pollute her water like the worst imaginable parasites and you know she really hasn't uh, taken measures to defend herself I suspect she's almost due I can't imagine the earth not taking you know her pattern of parasites and scratching them off so sooner than later but it does kind of make sense as a flea on a cat, not to have too many fleas because you'll ki kill the cat. And if you kill the cat, and fleas have killed cats, it's not 
the norm, it's not the usual thing, but kittens die of flea bites. So that means humans can kill the earth, literally, all life on the earth, making it utterly use useless as a vehicle to their needs. If that's the case, we are a universal planetary parasite. And if I was an intelligent species, the first order of business would be to exterminate such parasites. Get rid of them pronto fast. Planet killers? My goodness. Can't handle that. So as a human being, the question becomes, can we control our parasitic nature to become a more, um, what's the word for it? Um, symbiotic organism. Can we regenerate life on Earth to such a degree that those beings, those species, which have ceased to exist due to our cause, due to our growth, can be brought back and planted and can we seed life in other planets and make other planets useful for the type of life that has been raised in our planet? That would be a symbiotic relationship with the planets. And here's the really tricky part of that, because let's take, for instance, the sun. Now, scientists today, and I have argued this to the nth degree in these videos, scientists today tell us that the sun is not alive, that there is no life in the sun. But let's get this correct. Let's, let's see if we understand what they're saying. What is life? Life is intelligence, procreation, and the ability to die. What if, one, the sun is alive, and two, the sun is filled to the brim with light entities. Call them jinn if you want. Why not? Kind of fits the uh, description, right? The being made out of light and smoke. An intelligence made out of light and smoke. But we are so primitive we do not recognize that such life exists. It's like being in the ocean and feeling that the fish are not alive. They're not part of the extended family of intelligent beings because they are fish. And they're too different from us to be understood as being alive. Well, if that's the case, and we are planet builders, we go off to other planets to colonize them and seed them with earth-like creatures and life, trees, plants, animals, Genesis type stuff. What is to guarantee us that in those planets there is not already some form of life which we do not recognize as such? Let's say that we have the technology to build Earth on Venus. Now, scientists tell us that Venus is full of toxic gases and blah, 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 blah. It is too hot to support life. Okay, fine. Ammonia, I think it's, it's ammonia. What is it mean? I don't know. What if in Venus, the forms of life that we will encounter are not based on carbon, oxygen, molecules, but in ammonia molecules. And what if our seeding Venus with this type of life that we have here eradicates the life that is already on Venus? Well, we're back to the parasite scenario for mankind. It's a very tricky, tricky, tricky thing. And the other question is, can we know, as human beings, the limits of that. In one of my 
worst psychedelic nightmares <laughs> or bad trips. Um, I, I was reading the sacred scriptures of the Bible and all that, and I got to the point where the human form was the last form alive on the universe. Meaning that human beings somehow managed to be the last things alive on the entire universe. We're talking about not the mass extinction on the planet Earth, the mass extinction on the universe. Well, we're the last. We're the last being on Earth. Closely followed by snakes. Why snakes? Because snakes are the chariot of Vishnu. So if you have a if you have an image of Vishnu, Vishnu, what you will see is Vishnu and his consort riding Ananta Shesha, a thousand-headed snake, on an ocean of chaos, an ocean of nothingness, an ocean of all probability but no cause, and that's yes, and and out of that. From the belly button of Vishnu sprouts the lotus leaf upon which sits Brahma, who creates the universe and the beings in the universe. That's pretty rough going because that means that the last form before the end of time and space is the human form. And everything that has gone before it, everything that has gone after it, disappears. Mice, fleas, cats, snakes. And the vehicle we which which that human form uses to that primal human form Vishnu uses to ride into that eternity is a thousand headed snake. Which separates chaos from creation. And if you go to that symbolism, you find time the Timat and Marduk, you find uh, God and the devil, you find all the ancient scriptures tie in together pretty well to describe a, a human being, a primal human being, or human beings, because there's two in the snake, this consort is there, and a gigantic single organism that is a snake, the very last, maybe, or the very first, could be the last, the first, the first, the last. And that was the trip, that was the trip that I had, and that was kind of like really trippy shit because I was like, whoa, you know, the human form is the last form of the, of the universe. The black hole at the end of time swallows everything up as a human mouth. Blah. Trippy. Anyways, that's that's my trip for the morning. I had to watch this war movie. I don't, you know, I've watched it three times, I still don't get it. Paranormal four or something. I guess it's just not that interesting. That's why I haven't watched it all the time. But I mean, I've watched it three times, so I get it. I just, just don't get it. Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna lay off the the blog for a minute, and I'm gonna go watch this movie, and maybe get a few more Z's because I am tired and I haven't slept. But an hour or two, you know, you smoke weed, you don't sleep, that's the deal. God bless.